Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. Let's dive right in. Now today we will be playing My Home Nation, and it's not on this list. For shame, Paradox, for shame, My Home Nation still has not received a focus tree. And which country is that, you ask? Belgium. Glorious little Belgium, stuck here without a focus tree, even though they held out longer than the Netherlands, who got a magnificent focus tree. I'm a little bit salty about that. Anyway, as Belgium, we will be going for the Forge of Victory achievement. All in all, relatively easy. Just need 50 factories. Any factory will do. And because it's so easy, we will be doing it with a twist. Belgium will remain a bastion of democracy. There will be no flipping to either the brown shirts or the red guards. No, Belgium is free and shall remain free. Evermore. For those of you looking to get an easy run of this achievement, um, I'll just give you a quick, a quick recap of what to do. For the fascist annex Netherlands, invade France together with Germany. Bada bing, bada boom, you've got your achievement. But we're not about that. We will be playing this as a democratic country. So, Iron Man mode on, so you know I'm not cheating. And historical AI focuses on. Let's go. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this, and don't forget to click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content, that way you will be on the first row to the show. That said, we also have a pretty cool and active Discord community, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. And with that said, let's get on to the video. Ah, Belgium. Actually starts with a relatively large army, 11 divisions, and we don't need any of them. Bye bye. Next up, factories. We will not be making fighters. Uh, we'll put everything on the infantry equipment for now, with a spare factory on support equipment. We can't really make anything else that useful. Like air, we will not be competing with Germany in the air. And for the ground equipment, motorized, not that helpful, at least not yet. So five factories on infantry equipment and we'll build a bit more support equipment after. As for research, let's stick with the basics, electronic mechanical engineering, machine tools and construction one. Focuses, let's go get ourselves some political effort. 120 PP, pretty nice to start with. And I suppose we could trade with France, doesn't hurt that much. The Air Force can go, don't need you. Now I know I could release the Congo and uh, Luanda and Burundi as puppets, but I don't want to. It's a very un-Belgium thing to do. Let's uh, let's just hold on to that land, shall we? Not much else to do. Uh, let's get it going. We don't have that much manpower. Industrially, we're okay with uh, 10 civilian factories. Got six military ones. So we're doing okay. That's about it, though. As for construction, I'm opening with infrastructure because infrastructure doesn't suffer from the penalty that civilian economy gives to the other factories. Once we ramp this up to a probably partial mobilization, we'll start on the military factories. And in case this finishes before we're quite there, we'll start building a couple of bunkers in Malmedy. Start training a couple of divisions as well. There we go, that's some nice PP, and we'll start with getting partial mobilization. Now, there are other options, you could get the Silent Workhorse, 15% PP gain, I'll get him next, and our Chief of Air Force here, the Old Guard, is also a very nice addition, another 10% political power gain. But we'll start with the partial mobilization, just so we can start cranking our factories a little bit quicker. As for our focuses, I could go into the industrial effort, but I'm a little tempted to rush down towards this one, deterrence, and speed up the construction speed for both our forts and our military factories. So that that is what I'm going to do. I don't know if it's actually the best idea though. I, uh, I haven't really played Democratic Belgium before, so uh, bear with me. All right, as for research, uh, I could get uh, mechanical computing, boost research speed, probably not a bad idea. However, I also need artillery, doctrines, obviously, and I plan to get my hands on heavy tanks, just so our units have something to hide behind. But I think it's a good idea to get research first. We do have some time before the fights kick off. Now, the downside of playing Democratic Belgium, despite being the greatest country on Earth, is there's not much going on until the Germans come knocking. So if you're just looking for that quick achievement, like I said, flip fascist invade Netherlands, they're relatively weak. 
and then join the Axis. Once Germany declares on France, they can push through your territory into Paris and you should get all the occupations since they're going through your land. That will net you an easy 50 factories and an achievement. However, like I said, I like a challenge. Basic machine tools done. Could go with concentrated, could go with dispersed. You know me by now, I am all about that dispersed industry. And we've started work on our factories. Good, good, we need a lot of factories. Liberty ethos done. Onwards, neutrality. Belgium will be absolutely and totally neutral for now. And another PP pick. Let's get Paul van Zeeland, the silent workhorse. Instructions done. I'm not going to go ahead of time here. So let's sidetrack and start work on the armor. Like I said, I want those heavy tanks so I can hide my troops behind them. That's the first couple divisions ready. I'll just park them on Brussels, start exercising. And yes, that is a rain in the background. If you're hearing that, I apologize. Not much I can do about it. Military high command. Let's also hire a new commander, Henry here. He can be the general. And let's promote our other general, Keertz, the one we start with to a field marshal. He does have some nice stats. And again, if my microphone is picking up a lot of noise, it's because there's a hailstorm going on outside. Sorry, that's the neutrality focus done and we can get deterrence, fast land border, fast construction for land forts and military factories. Don't know if this is optimal. Like I said, haven't really played um, Democratic Belgium before, but I've always liked the challenge. And if our next pick will be a chief of the Air Force, if you can believe it, because that 10% political power gain is very nice. And the political power just keeps rolling in. I could get the tank designer. That might help with the tanks that we're about to build, though I, I have time. I think I'll get the industrial concern first. That's dispersed one finished. And let's head for the artillery so we can start making that as well. Mechanical computing done. What else could we do with this? Could get radios or I could go a little bit ahead of time and get dispersed industry too. All right, deterrence is done. Let's go to the industrial branch here, industrial efforts. Little unfortunate that there's not much interesting to do as Belgium. Could do some things with the Congo. I do hope that when Belgium finally gets its focus tree, they will treat the Belgian Congo the same way the Dutch East Indies got their updates. Like make them some sort of puppet with a colonial governor in position. It could be so much cooler than what we have now. All right, the great war tanks done. Finally, let's get those heavy tank ones. Yes, I know heavy tank one isn't exactly fantastic, but um, it gives our troops something to hide behind when the Germans come. Ah, the elections. The public opposes rearmament. Fortunately for us, we know better than the people. Yeah, we are not ramping down to early mobilization. No, we will protect our sovereignty at all costs. Yes, this will give us some negatives. So be it. That's industrial effort done. Gives us a nice bonus. And I'll first get those three military factories. Rush all the way down to armament effort three. And follow up with the same tactic on the other side of the branch towards the extra research slot. And we can make another PP pick. I think I'll go for the tank designer. Now, either we can get the Vickers Armstrong, 5% reliability, 5% soft attack, not terrible. Or we get Renault, 5% speed, yeah, that's not gonna matter. But 10% reliability, I think we will go with Renault. I should probably make my mobilization law the next priority because that's not a lot of manpower we have available. And as the country starts to fill up with military factories, we will have to eventually start work on bunkers. I'll start with uh, a fort line of four forts along this edge of the country. So these four provinces. I hope that we can get troops into Luxembourg before they capitulate. If we can't, I'll have to extend my defensive front to the south significantly and to the north of our country. I do not intend to fight this war on my land. I think I will try pushing into the Netherlands and using this river as a front line. Ah, our artillery is done. Let's get anti-air as well. <laughs> we will need something to contest the Germans in the air. Like we, we will be shooting down a lot of their casts, I hope. Let's also change production around. 
Take two factories and assign them to Code Artillery. All right, this burst two is done. And I'm going to rush ahead and get this burst three using the bonus from the industrial branch. And another 150 PP. Like I said, I think it's time to ramp up to limited conscription first. Do need more manpower. Oh, and I forgot about the Spanish Civil War. I should probably send uh, an attache there. Oh, well, I can still send one to China. I may, I may have forgotten about that part. Yeah, I do need more army XP. All right, heavy tank one is done. Now, we could start making heavy tanks. However, we need a lot of heavy tanks tanks for a battalion. Instead, I'm going to make heavy tank destroyers. The poor man's heavy tank. Need far fewer of these to meet my needs. And they're good at shooting down those German tanks. Eventually. Already heavy tank destroyer one finished so I can start making those and we will need a lot of those. I do think I'll start trading for resources now, especially chromium. Uh, I will try and trade with France as much as possible because that strengthens the French. And odd as this may sound, I'd rather have a strong France at my side. As for research, I'm not going to get myself heavy tanks too. That's a little bit ahead of time. Instead, let's go back to the industry, get improved machine tools. Now it's mid 37, so the war in China should kick off soon. Let's improve relations with the Chinese. All right, we've finished our toad anti-air. Can start making those as well. Two factories. So I'm putting two factories on all of the support equipment, like support equipment itself, toad artillery and toad anti-air. That should be enough to meet our needs until we need to switch things around. This will do. Infantry equipment's also fine. We can get quite a few of it with Lend-Lease. So I'm going to take a bunch of factories off that, then reassign them just so we can produce more heavy tank destroyers. We will need a lot of those. Now it's for research, back to the industry. And I'm gonna keep training units as long as I have equipment and manpower. I want these units to be trained by the time, well, disaster strikes for poor little Belgium. And another 150 political power. Not much interesting in the political advisor branch. Could start on the military, but I think that's a little bit premature. Cannot ramp up our mobilization laws. Uh, not going to go to free trade because I'm already trading for a lot of resources. I cannot afford to trade for much more. So instead, oops, let's get either a military theorist to speed up those land doctrines and get more army experience or material designer just to speed up the infantry equipment research. Um, I think I'll go with the theorist first. Oh yeah, that just reminds me what an idiot I am. I should have held on to 100 political power to send to China. Oh well. All right, armament effort three done. Now let's rush for the extra research slot. Yeah, this is this is why I should have saved that 100 political power. Oh, sometimes I'm an idiot. Oh well. Meanwhile, I'll improve my field marshal. Uh, defensive doctrine, obvious. Reinforce rate, perfect. And charismatic? Sure. We can start spending a little bit of our army experience as well. The infantry can have support artillery. Yes, I know we have nowhere near enough equipment yet. That will be fixed eventually. All right, 100 political power. Let's send the boys to China. Send attaché. Perfect. Now we should start getting a bunch of... Oh yeah, that's some nice army experience. Could have sent one to Spain earlier, but I find that the Chinese just do a lot more fighting giving you a lot more political power. Uh, I mean, army experience. Let's change the division templates one more time and add support anti-air. And again, yes, I know I don't have enough of it. We will soon enough. We have time. It's only 37. And we're starting to get a few heavy tank destroyers. These will be so valuable to us. Mm, no Japan. I think I'll keep my attaches where they are. To deal with that, we could just do some uh, anti-fascist raids. Mm, that gets rid of these uh, Rex boys. Lowering our fascism. And if it's below 10%, I believe you will not get a negative PP from declining to withdraw your attaché. Plus, we need more stability. Uh, we were below 80 and we'd rather have over 80 by the time the war fires. We do have a lot of army experience. Let's make the final change to our divisions. Expensive, but necessary. Let's add one unit of heavy tank destroyers to the basic infantry division. This brings them up to 20 combat width, but look at those defensive stats. Pretty nice, I'd say. A good piercing as well. Armored? I don't think the Germans are going to be able to pierce my divisions. Well, I should be able to blow most of theirs out of the water. The big downside to this is I need a lot of heavy tank destroyers. Let's keep working on that infantry equipment. We definitely want them to be as powerful as possible by the time, uh, you know. Oh, right. Now we added tanks. Our army requires is fuel. We have to keep that in mind. And some more political power to spend here. Uh, 
probably not be a bad idea to get an equipment designer for the infantry. And from now on, just save up to invest in military high command and to eventually swap out to our mobilization laws and economy laws because, uh, well, we are gonna need it. And I'm gonna crank it all the way to the maximum manpower I can put in the field. I'll ramp up my recruitment laws as soon as the game will allow me. I just need divisions in the field in case the French AI does something less than optimal. We shouldn't be taking massive casualties anyway with our massive tanks the hind behind. Now moving forward with research, pretty obvious. I'm gonna keep improving the industry and the engineering whenever I can and keep the equipment that I have up to date. That includes the heavy tank destroyers. I'll just need to prioritize and uh, well see if I can keep everything together. As for political power, let's go and get ourselves an infantry expert or logistics expert. I'll get the army logistics guy. I can get the others later, but I am going to lose equipment if I exercise the troops I'm going to equip. Or rather, I am going to lose equipment when I exercise the troops I'm still going to deploy. We got plenty of time. I'm going to jack up the armor on my heavy tank destroyers a little bit. See if that helps. Don't lose a lot of efficiency switching out to a variant anyway. You know, I just want to keep my boys alive. It looks like heavy tank destroyers are the only way that we are ever going to manage. Time for the infantry expert or maybe the army defense guy? No, we'll start with the infantry expert. We have time. We have time to get everything we need. It's August of 38. And I'd say the Belgian army is pretty well prepared for what's coming. Um, stockpiles could be larger, though, especially heavy tank destroyers. And I know manpower is dire. <laughs> All right, that gets us the research lots. Uh, I'll probably head down army effort, get some doctrines and equipment bonuses, maybe even the armor bonus. And we have started work on the fort line. Finally, hope to get these done by the time we uh, have the Germans knocking on our door. What we should, we should. I could pull away some trade like tungsten. Should be fine. Apparently, our army defense expert is Leon de Grel. He, he does not have a have a good name in this country. No, he does not. Fun fact, it is forbidden by law to return the mortal remains of Leon de Grel to the country of Belgium for burial. That's how little we like him. Well, Germans have taken Memel. Shouldn't be too long before the Czechs disappear. Poor Czechs never stood a chance. I think I'll start hoarding what's left of my political power. I'll wait until I have 400 in the bank. Hopefully by the time the Germans come knocking. That will allow me to go to total mobilization, extensive conscription, and then get women in the workforce as well. Oh dear lord, I forgot the research radios. I hope I can get those out in time. Whew. That was not smart. There goes the checks. Uh, I did get my armor bonus, so that's cool. If anyone's wondering what I'm lacking in terms of resources, I'm just not trading for aluminum anymore. I've got a nice stockpile of support equipment. We're not going to burn through it quickly enough anyway. I can sit on this for a while. I'd rather have that factory churning out forts instead. I'm gonna start work on heavy tank tubes. I know it's well ahead of time, but... Uh can start making those eventually. I'm happy with the speed on doctrines though. We've gotten most, like we've got the important ones like prepared defense. That is going to help. Ah, we're actually in the green on all equipment. Good, good. Uh, I'm going to stop making new things for a while. Quickly cancel all those. Just churn out forts quickly. We have a few months. The lack of equipment, let's say, that we're making now it won't matter that much. With those heavy tank destroyers in our divisions, we should be taking minimal casualties on the defensive. I'd rather make a few more forts. Again, I could be completely wrong. I just want to try it. Whew, managed to get my radios done at least. Yeah, the forts are almost done and then we can go back to trading for those uh, resources we need. We got a decent stockpile, except for those tank destroyers, not a lot of them. But, uh, like I said, we shouldn't burn through this equipment too quickly. We take very little casualties with the hardness that these tank destroyers give to our divisions. Uh oh, there goes Poland and... Uh, I'm in danger. Build faster, damn you, build faster. Any future construction is just going to be straight up military factories, assuming we can actually get any of them built. Might even plop down what we can in the Congo. Time to start some uh, war propaganda against the Germans. Give our war support a nice boost. And there goes Poland. Oh, poor Poland, never stood a chance. The Germans should be coming for, oh yeah, they're going after my neighbors. 
And there they go, they're going after us. Time to slow things down, this is where the fun begins. Let's accept that invitation. We're in the Allies now. Uh, time to move our troops into position. Take up defensive positions along the River Meuse. I think it's the River Meuse. Meuse? Meuse? And I'll move a few divisions in here to support these units. It looks very red, but it should turn green soon. I just hope I can reinforce the Dutch before they fall. Actually, it might be better not to do that. Just stay here. Do defend the Maastricht, though. There, I think that's a reasonable front line. Get everyone into position and start uh, getting entrenchment, etc. And we're winning? Like, we'll probably be winning most of the fights. Problem is going to be... Um, Germany can keep hitting us again and again and again and again and that's going to hurt us a lot. Essentially they're going to drain our organization. Now the rest of this campaign is going to be looking at a line of troops barely holding on to dear life. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, and before I forget, ramp up to extensive description and total mobilization and women in the workforce. There, we've done what we can. Now we hold on to dear life. French troops rushing in is helping, or at least it should help. Netherlands are gonna fall though, I'm pretty sure. God, I love these. They cannot for the life of them pierce my divisions and that's really what's giving me a fighting chance in this. Look at our defense here, 902 defense against 80 attack. Like I said, we'll be winning almost all of these fights. It's just that they can keep initiating fights before my organization recovers. And with that in mind, it might actually be better to switch out to army morale eventually because I don't think we need that 10% defense with those troops. Like those tank destroyers are doing the Lord's work. And I'll be microing the defense mostly, uh, moving troops in and out of these fights as their organization gets low and allowing them to reinforce with a division that actually has, well, more org left. Even though we're winning, it's it's eventually going to cost us much. Time to head for why we fight. More stability is nice. And with that in mind, it might not be a bad idea to head for improved worker conditions now. Just to get our stability up. It is pretty low and I want it to be over 50. Uh, the defense here is wavering and I don't have the uh, command power. I'm gonna withdraw my attaché from China so I can have that command power available. Every now and then... I will have to make a last stand, even though I kind of hate it. Oh, that, that hurts. That will allow me to reinforce the fight, I hope. I think we've pretty much stabilized this front for now. Might actually be better to abandon Uppe Malmedy and fall back to these two tiles behind it. And to that end, I've started building forts in this province as well. Uh, just because Uppe can be attacked from... One, two, three, four, five sides opening up a massive combat with. While if I just fall back one tile, that's a lot easier to defend, I think. Oh, the sacrifices we make for democracy. And in terms of casualties, we are holding fairly well. I'm gonna take that opportunity and recruit a few more divisions. See how much I can make before I run out of equipment. Uh, manpower runs out first. I'm surprised that... Germany stopped attacking the Netherlands. They've not even completely overrun the country. That's new. They usually just ruffle stomp the Netherlands and I think they still could. Not sure why they're not bothering this time. Is it because they're committing so much strength to attacking me here? It might be. It does look like this province is about to fall. It might be best if I just let it. I don't think I'll be able to finish uh, all those forts in the tile below it. Let's not waste strength defending that. Yeah, so be it. We've lost that position. We can always retake it. I think we're in a much better defensive situation now, though. They cannot open up as much combat with this way, and the terrain is still good. This is good to know for future runs. Equipment-wise, we're still holding strong. So we are losing a lot of infantry equipment, though we got a nice stockpile. We should be good. It's not great, but we're good. We're good. This does feel like we're in the good old days of trench warfare once again. <laughs> Though at least we didn't have to give up as much of Belgium as we'd had to in 1914. Now the plan is to survive. Hold on to dear life until the Americans get here to save us. Very inspiring, isn't it?
And it looks like little old Belgium is doing quite well. We've inflicted the most casualties on the Germans and we've not even taken that many losses. 14,000 brave Belgians have given their lives in defense of the homeland. We can only hope that we can honor their sacrifice with a great victory. I'm actually confident enough that I'm willing to jack this up to five speed and watch the bubbles go brrr. Oh, the Italians are in. Uh, I hope France doesn't completely fold in the south because I might need to intervene in the south if something goes wrong there. I have four divisions that I could possibly use for that task. If only the French knew, they they really don't have to stack the Maginot this thick. You could pull three quarters of these divisions off the Maginot and you'd be fine, France. Just send them south. It looks like you're gonna need them. You know, I'm not sure who's the more incompetent AI here. Italy or France? It's, uh, it's tough to call. I might be forced to take another last stand order, much as I hate it. But I don't want to lose this river line. This is excellent defensive terrain. We have to hold here. Just get the troops in position. Start building planning bonus as well. A nice and ambitious front, front line order. We can improve our generals. Now, usually I, I go for infantry expert quite often because, well, it allows you to wield those 14 fours a little better. But I think ambusher is going to be best here. Like that max entrenchment is going to help. Now, assuming the Germans ever stop attacking now. Well, I think... I'm going to be careful, but I think we've stopped their assault. Little Belgium has held the gate closed and we have effectively saved France at this point. If the British would just commit some troops to the continent, everybody would be happy. But no, no, they're busy in Africa. Not even doing that well. Not doing well at all. Aha, heavy tank twos. 1940. Very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, heavy tank destroyer too. You must be seriously bleeding the Germans. Yeah, oh, we are bleeding the Germans dry. Though it is costing us dearly. 31,000 of our beloved countrymen have laid down their lives. Their sacrifice will be remembered and honored. Make no mistake, Belgium does not forget its own. I've also switched out the defense expert for the army morale expert. Because I don't think we need the extra defense and the morale recovery is going to be held. Well, I, I just said that and we're losing in this tile. Excuse me? By now, there are so many allied divisions committed to the Belgian slash Dutch border that I don't think the Germans are going to pierce this. The Italians have even completely lost their front line. France is just walking in there, though it is France. And I'm expecting them to get pushed all the way to Paris from the south at any moment. So I have no faith in that offensive whatsoever. But overall, allies are doing great. Now we keep bleeding the Germans until either we can counterattack or the Americans arrive. And we can counterattack. 20 minutes later. Oh yeah, as expected. That, there go the French. Yeah, they're just getting pushed straight out. Uh, could have seen that coming. Uh... I'll have to put a contingency in place, prepare troops to secure this border, just in case the French mess it up. It does look like they're failing pretty horribly, but the Italian offensive stalling. I don't think the Italians have the equipment to keep it up. Oh, Belgium, y you cannot have an election without causing trouble, can you? Either I get commies and fascists in, or the people dislike me. I cannot afford to let my stability drop much more, so I'll just appease the masses and then immediately start purging them. Yep, the Italians have reached our defensive line. Good thing we had those units in reserve. God, France, you're so incompetent. Uh-oh. Uh oh, that's Luxembourg in. Um, I gotta rush my troops in there, extend the line real quick, cover Luxembourg, and hope to god I can get some divisions in there before they fall. Oh no, no, we should be fine. Well, we cannot let this stalemate continue forever, so we have to prepare to break it. I'm gonna duplicate this division and start work on an offensive template. That's right, a modified version of the 14-4. This is 13 infantry battalions, or brigades, no, battalions, one unit of heavy tank destroyers, and four units of artillery. This is a decent version of the 14-4, I'd say. I'm only using this because we have so many of these heavy tank destroyers in reserve anyway. They are pretty good at providing that breakthrough and that armor. That armor is fantastic. And I think I'll switch those divisions to the south to this template. I don't have the manpower. You see this costs 78,000 manpower just to switch these 12 units. So I don't have the manpower to switch the entire northern army over. 
I'll do it to the southern army, let them exercise, maybe, or well, get some experience naturally if the Italians decide to charge. And then use these to either naval invade Italy or to break through in the German region, maybe around the Rhineland. Meanwhile, how is contribution looking? A little bleak. That's a little meager, I'd say. Not, not very satisfied there. I have to start work there. I want to fix that. Uh, switch this out. Start naval effort. Get myself some dockyards and research should shift as well. Gonna make a few submarines and research naval invasion tech. I'm just gonna knock out Italy. Italy has to go. Open up the weak underbelly of the Germans that way. Oh, Japan's justifying. That means they'll go after the European holdings soon, which is uh, pretty great because that's gonna pull in the US. Should probably prepare some sort of counterattack in the south just so we can retake a port. <laughs> I, I need a port to launch my invasions from, you see. Meanwhile, we might actually reach Marseille. If we can survive. Ah, got a good encirclement with it, like that. Just stick it to the Italians. Oh yeah, love that. Oh, if we can pull off this encirclement. Oh no, oh, they're reinforcing the line now. Damn, it's too good to be true. Oh yeah, and the French are already ruining things. They're about to get me encircled. Yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that. Let's just fall back and defend here. That's more reasonable. I'm surprised that Greece is still holding out here. That's amazing. That's amazing. Meanwhile, North Africa is a bit of a stalemate and East Africa is just, well... Well... Not great. That's a, a big freedom train coming our way. Those American boys sure are welcome. A few moments later. All right, it's time to set those naval invasions off and see just how much damage we can do to Italy. I'm sure the American troops will help us break the deadlock in the north, but uh, yeah, might want to expedite it a little, see just what we can do. Looks like there are some Italian divisions here, though. Oh, no, nothing, nothing of concern. Well, we've broken through. Time to cut the peninsula in half and, uh, well, knock out Italy. You know, you can always count on Italy to be consistently terrible. It is just so absurdly easy to knock the Italians out of this. Oh, God. And I think with that, we have also fulfilled our requirements. No, no, not yet. Close, though. We're close. Meanwhile, our contribution is still only a laughable 9%, even though we have just, uh, you know, successfully naval invaded Italy, the soft underbelly of Europe, and we've um, slain almost a million Germans and uh, 200,000 Italians, give or take. Alas, at the cost of 70,000 brave Belgians, their sacrifice will not be forgotten. You know, I'm a little embarrassed at just how easy it is to capitulate the Italians. I mean, I did this with 12 divisions. Hardly any resistance either. And with the fall of Milan, there goes Italy. Great. Now to mop up these encircled divisions here real quick and establish some some form of front line uh, near the Alps. There's still a bunch of divisions encircled here now. Now, looking at our factory count, I think we're there. 34 military factories, 6 dockyards, that's 40. Yes, dockyards count. And add another 17 civilian factories, of which only 10 are mine. But even so, that is 50 factories as Belgium, done as democratic Belgium. I'd say that is our forge of victory complete. Now to take out what's left of the Axis. Time to start our offensive to the north as well. A lot of German divisions have shifted around to cover their now exposed Alpine front. Let us exploit that. It has done wonders for our participation though, knocking out Italy. So there's that at least. And there goes the world. The Soviets have declared on Turkey. Turkey is guaranteed by both the UK and the Germans. So the Soviets are now fighting the Germans and the Allies. Yeah, that's gonna be great for you, Stalin. Meanwhile, I could make more gains, but I'm trying to um, be very sneaky about it. Uh, I'm trying to push only from my territory. That way, all the territorial gains go to us. 
and, well, we all want to see Belgium grow stronger, don't we? I don't think I need to reinforce that Alpine front anymore. I'm gonna pull those guys out and help on the other side of the front. And now we drive a stake right into Germany's heart. I'm concerned by France getting all that land that I'm conquering. You know, France, you've, you've not done much useful this run. And we've encircled much of the German army already. Great. Let's just, let's just end this. Uh, enough fancy plays, just destroy Germany. Ooh, that's a lot of German divisions we've got encircled here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be juicy. You know, I'm getting really annoyed with France just taking all that stuff. There's not even any negotiating about it. It's just yoink. Ours. Kind of lame. I mean, I've done all the heavy lifting here. Yeah, just just look at that. France just takes everything. Man, that's so lame. I have more participation than France as well. A lot more. Excellent. Belgian forces are advancing on Berlin. The capital is wide open. The Reich is about to fall. Th those are not French forces, sir. Look at that occupation breakdown. And someone explain to me why this is going to France. I control 98% of the territory, France controls 0%, and Germany controls 0%. I guess that's a rounding error. But why is it going to France? Why? I suppose it doesn't matter anymore at this point. I got the achievement, or rather, the challenge done. It's just kind of lame. Uh, Germany is almost on its knees. Unfortunately, we'll also have to take out Hungary, who for some reason is a major, greater Hungary, my ass. And there goes Germany. I'll just redirect everything over to the wait, maybe not the Hungarian border. Let's just let's just put some troops up against the Soviet border. The Soviets might actually pose a problem. We need to knock out the Bulgarians, or uh, rather the Hungarians, before the Soviets get there. So as we are about to knock the Hungarians out, let's take a quick look at just how well Belgium did this run. We are sitting on 126 factories, so I'd say, yeah, we, we got the achievement. 38 divisions, not that many, but they're really good, so we don't need that many. And that has gotten us a 30% participation, and we're about to overtake the UK as well. All that at the cost of 266,000 brave Belgians. And we hurt Germany. 1.8 million casualties inflicted by us. I'd say we did our part. And with that, Hungary falls. Time to make Belgium great. Ah, uh, whoops. So I accidentally clicked done instead of next turn. So this is the horrible, horrible mess we end up with. Uh, sorry for that. I'm not going to replay the entire campaign because I misclicked a button. Please, Paradox, do something about the peace treaties, at least. At any rate, that is a very mighty fine looking Belgium we have there. And we did all that while staying democratic, arguably the worst ideology in Hearts of Iron 4. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you hate this border gore. If you did, leave a like, hit me up in the comments with more suggestions. I've gotten some great stuff in the past and I'm working on some more stuff that was suggested by you, the community. Also, consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this one, it really helps out the channel a lot. Growth has been magnificent and I owe that all to you guys. Now, if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just hit that dislike button and tell me what I did wrong in the comments. Always looking to learn. And finally, once again, a massive, massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Thank you for helping make these videos reality. This has been me, Bittersteel. See you in the next one. Goodbye.